Hi everyone, my name is Aaron Choi. I'm a senior consultant here with Capgold. And today we have joining us Joanna Lewis, who's our partner here. Uh, she's the partner for finance, risk, compliance, and data management. And obviously she's also the lead of our data, uh, data practice here at Capgold Canada. Joanna, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Hi, Aaron. Thanks for, for inviting me. And uh, I love the topic that we're going to be talking about today, data collaboration, something I feel really passionate about, actually. That's awesome. So uh, as you're aware, James and I wrote a white paper recently about data management trends for 2020 and uh, beyond. And we do talk about data collaboration and some other trends such as data exchanges, augmented uh, data management, knowledge graphs. We touch upon data fabrics a little bit, right? And um, us as consultants, we really do have the privilege of uh, providing uh, a holistic insight into some of these trends because we have so much experience uh, at, um, with all our different clients just implementing it and seeing what they're doing, right? Um, and for us, we, we probably, I think we provide a lot of value just sharing some of these insights and how um, these trends are being leveraged and used around the financial services industry. Um, so that being said, I'm just going to jump right into some of the, the questions that we had today. So how do you see the challenges for uh, COVID-19 for this year? And obviously 2020, it's been a very unique year for us all. Like there's a lot of challenges with that. It, come, it creates opportunities for um, using data collaboration. And how do you see uh, users being able to collaborate and interact with data during these challenging times? Well, COVID's been really interesting, Aaron, because um, I don't I think you would agree. The observation is that people have been ferociously um, consuming data. Um, so, you know, the governments have played a big part in that, sharing different APIs. I know the government here in Canada has been sharing a lot of downloadable information. And I think many of us have been actually checking this data on a daily, daily basis. So it's created a great culture. Um, but at the same time, it's actually highlighted for us um, some of the challenges that come with collaborating around data. So we've seen you know, concerns about uh, or trust in some of the data that's coming, for example, sure, from some sure. of the countries, right, that highlights a trust issue. And then the other issue, right, we see is around um, transparency, consistency, control, which for those of us who work in data, these are common challenges. But, you know, for um, you know, people around the world who are consuming this data, they're starting to realize that, hey, different regions are reporting information in different ways. So it really highlights, I think, the importance of having, you know, those basic foundational aspects in place. Oh, for sure. I think data collaboration in general really would help solve a lot of these issues, just, you know, solving a lot of the integration, um, maybe some of the data quality issues and bringing all that stuff together in a more meaningful way for um, of whoever's going to be consuming it, right? Just to make sure that everybody has the same and correct understanding of uh, what people are trying to say with the data, right? Um, so I guess one of the uh, trends that we talk about in the white paper are about data exchanges. So that being said, well, how do you see data exchanges uh, being used for financial services? How do you think it's going to be used and maybe evolve or change in the future? Yeah, well, I think there's, there's two sides to this. First, there's the consumer. Right, who are managing multiple accounts, you know, with different financial services relationships, and they want access to their data, um, you know, potentially for new financial apps from fintechs and, and, and that that type of use. Secondly, you know, the FIs themselves are seeing the benefit of using third-party data when they can offer a more personalized experience, right, customer experiences, and they can also use it to better tackle issues such as fraud. Um, but I think if we want to see the FIs really buy into this, um, they have to view um, the mutual benefit outweighing the risk. Um, and I think with improvements in privacy, enhancing technologies, I think that perception of the risk is going to decrease. Okay, well, that's actually it's pretty actually interesting, interesting because uh, you, uh, you talked about uh, some uh, of the so concerns about um, you know fraud. Um, and maybe that's a good segue into our, our next question because there are a lot of concerns from a regulatory and fraud perspective when it comes to data exchanges and data collaboration. Can you maybe just highlight some of these um, some of these concerns and maybe uh, highlight uh, some of some of the the ways that we kind of get around it with uh, using these type of solutions? Yeah. So I mean, I think the, the biggest concerns remain quite clearly the security and the privacy of data. 
Um, and this is where there's been lots of focus from a technology point of view. How do you securely exchange data? Like still consider the levels of trust and control. Um, and, and how do you leverage external data assets in a decentralized manner, right? Um, but still respecting, um, you know, access controls and ensuring, you know, you're not exposing sensitive information. So that's a big, it's a big challenge, right? Um, and so we're seeing a lot of focus on, you know, how can technology help mitigate or manage that? And it's interesting, actually, the SCA, as the UK's financial conduct, um, Authority. They actually had a quite an interesting working group where they brought different um, members of the financial community and technology or technologists together. And really, where we're seeing kind of the three big trends around this are um, homomorphic encryption, secure multi-party compute, and secure in-play technologies. So I think more and more as we see these starting to get incorporated and used, I think it's going to be able to open up more comfort um, in uh, when it comes to security and privacy of data. Well, so that's actually pretty interesting. Do you see some of the uh, of our clients here at Capital Canada? Do you think it would be a good use case or something that we could explore with them as well? Well, I think, and I and I hope you know honestly that all the FIs are starting to look at some of these advanced techniques. Um, and it certainly, I think, is is the trend that we're going to see over the next couple of years. Um, yeah. you know, um, both in, in securing securing data, but also sort of meeting a lot of the enhanced you know privacy requirements and demands, yeah. both from regulators and from consumers. Oh yeah, for sure. I think something like this, it, it really needs we we need people to actually be you know, have it more. I guess instilled with confidence in some of the data that that's being presented before they could actually adopt and use some of the technology or I guess use the data, right? And the technology that, that we're seeing now is really helping drive this, right? Um, okay, so I'm gonna shift gears into talking about augmented data management. Um, so I mean, di augmented data management, it's uh, it's helping automate um, a lot of the da data governance processes, just like um, you know, metadata creation, uh, getting data lineage, and leveraging that to, to use with machine learning and artificial intelligence. Where do you see some of the biggest opportunities for something like this for financial services institutions? Yeah, but to me the biggest opportunity um, and, it, and it really comes with digitizing or automating really anything is, is, is the ability to layer control, right? So automation should, and these automated data governance tools should not be replacing people's responsibility in the process, right? Um, really to get the most benefit and upside, you know, what I would suggest is really understand and optimize your data governance framework and process. So don't automate a bad process to begin with, right? So to get the biggest, you know, bang for your buck or uplift is really look to see how these automation tools can layer within your existing control framework um, and leverage it in, in that respect. Okay. Well, uh, I guess uh, it does make sense because we do need to have a, a proper framework for all these things because, uh, as you mentioned, we can't really have technologies just replace everyone. It makes no sense, right? Having the right framework and the processes in place um, and having the right technology really marries the two together to, to create the, the biggest benefits uh, for for different FS or, or financial ser uh, services institutions and organizations, right? Like automation is not a solution, it's an enabler and um, it certainly is a great control to put into place. Um, but again, like, I, like I, I mentioned, you know, it's really not going to fix a bad data governance process. Mm -hmm. Exactly, totally agree with you there. Um, okay, so maybe one last question. Um, Joanna, where do you see the biggest trends over the next few years? Maybe aside from like data collaboration, aside from uh, data exchanges, augmented data, uh, data management, but well, maybe something that's um, yeah, some of the, the next and upcoming things for twenty twenty and beyond. Yeah, well, I mean, um, you know, I think trend wise, I would say. Um, you know, COVID's really accelerated digital transformation, right? Um, so we're seeing a lot of our clients are, are accelerating their 
um, their, their digital customer experiences or their assisted digital experiences. Um, so there's going to be more and more demands on data to really facilitate that seamless customer experience. Um, one of the other trends that I, I, I've noticed, and you know, we like to say you know, data is king. Well, I think the data API is going to be king. Um, and and I've you know, kind of been following the financial data exchange, which is basically, I believe, a not not for profit um, that's working with different um, banks um, I know in the U.S. and now most recently in Canada to really create kind of a, some standard API um, that API standards relative to data collaboration. So I think that's going to be also an interesting trend that's going to help, you know, um, help, I think, increase the comfort level when it comes to, and the consistency, and what we talked about at the beginning, right, that trust and uh, the trust in the data. Um, I think that's going to be really important as we move ahead as well. That's awesome. That that opening or the, the data API sounds like a great idea because it something like this it's is yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's such a big problem within the data industry, if you want to call it that way. And you'd run into these problems everywhere and having some standards like this would actually really help drive the adoption of a lot of um, the data initiatives over the next few years whenever it's gonna be implemented, right? Awesome. So I think that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you, Joanna, so much for, for joining us. And uh, I hope to see you soon in person. For sure. Thanks, Aaron, for having me. Have a great day.